Behind me is a string sculpture that I designed and fabricated a few years ago. I designed the process, decided on the materials that I would use, and wove that string sculpture by hand. The process was about eight, eight hours long. In this next video, this is a robot that's carrying out the same thing, string sculptures. So this involved designing the process for the robot, designing the tool for the robot, simulating the process, designing the structure for the weave, and programming that robot to move exactly the way I needed it to, to fabricate the design. So in one, I'm fabricating using my hands, and in the other, a robot. Why? Here I am, thousands of miles away from home, using robots to make string sculptures. Why? You see, it's not about the string sculpture. It's about all the discoveries that I make along the way. It's about the process, not just the product. I am a maker. I enjoy making. I make to think. I make to learn new skills. I make to discover. This need to make has always been with me because I come from a family of makers. I knew my grandfather as a shoemaker and a gardener. My grandmother, aunts and uncles, they would sew their own clothes, and they still do today. My uncles were tailors, and they would come to our home to fix things that we needed fixing. My mother was a seamstress, a cake decorator, flower arranger. She was always doing with her hands. Uh, my father, a contractor who does plumbing, masonry, and fixes his own vehicle. So this legacy of making was literally handed down to me. Making to think, making to learn, making to make a living. In addition to being a maker, I'm also an architect, a research scientist, and computational designer. So I look critically into design. I look into the challenges and limits of technology, conventional design teaching, and practice. My purpose here today is to talk to you about craft, making, and culture. In my work, I look at craft and technology. Craft is deeply embedded in cultural practices. And I look at ways of integrating computation and digital technology into craft practices, to revive them, to reveal their possibilities. I believe that by understanding the foundations of craft practices, we can come up with design languages, tools, and technologies that we would never have imagined. So what does all of this have to do with, have to do with Trinidad and Tobago? Well, when you think of Trinidad and Tobago and design, what comes to mind? Ooh, this is great. Yes, carnival, exactly. That's what I thought of. And in 2012, I came to Trinidad to look deeply into carnival, to look at the landscape of design in carnival and the challenges that we were facing. I discovered two things that I'd like to share with you today. So I spoke with the people involved in design, observed the activities that were taking place in design, the tools that we were using for design, the skills and knowledge that people had and that they were sharing with each other. And I discovered, one, the impending disappearance of a traditional craft practice, and two, the younger generation's love of technology. And these challenges inspired my interest in combining craft and technology. 
I have another question for you, seeing that you've been so good at answering right questions. Uh, what's a craft practice that's an integral part of our carnival? Oh my goodness, all right. I think you guys need to come up here. Okay, so yes, wire bending. Wire bending is an integral part of our carnival. It's one of Trinidad and Tobago's premier craft practices. It started in the 1930s in Trinidad, um, and band presentations in these times were known for their meticulously detailed costuming and no, meticulously detailed construction, sorry, and brilliant costuming, the golden age of masquerade. Unfortunately, today wire bending is a dying practice. Let's take a moment to really think about what that means. One of our premier craft practices is disappearing. Wire bending and its importance to Trinidad and Tobago and its relationship to Carnival is very important. I see it as a blueprint, a pattern. In my mind, a prophecy for future innovation. Just as we wouldn't burn or destroy a manuscript because of its historical significance, we shouldn't allow our material works of culture to become extinct. It's important that we do this. And with this in mind, and understanding the importance of wire bending for our cultural history, heritage, and identity, I developed the Bailey Derrick Grammar, named after expert wirebenders Albert Bailey and Stephen Derrick. Mr. Derrick should be here today. I wish Mr. Bailey could make it. Now, this grammar is just a series of drawings. I have an example here. It's much larger than this. But it's a series of drawings, representations, which describe the materials, steps, and techniques in wire bending, as performed by Albert Bailey and Stephen Derrick. My hope is that this tool can be used for design education and design practice, so that we could share and grow our culture and see what the possibilities for wire bending might be, so that we can allow for invention rather than convention, preservation rather than neglect, advancement rather than stagnation. Now, for some, and I'm sure most of you, this is carnival for you, and that's okay. I enjoy this too. But for me, all the richness, all the real good stuff in carnival is what lies beneath. The stuff we rarely see, the making, the designing, the place and space where each of us can express our creativity and aesthetic sensibilities, the mass camps. And so in our carnival, individuals and communities, we have the opportunities to engage in making, which reminds me to tell you, we aren't making enough in Trinidad and Tobago. We value the ability to consume more than we value the ability to create. I'll repeat that again. Thank you. We, as a country, are, value are valuing our ability to consume more than our ability to create. We are consuming and we need to make. We need to make make, and make some more. We need to become makers first and consumers second. So my idea is by introducing technology and computational making or practices that we get people excited again about making. It's not about technology. Just like that string sculpture, and the robot making the string sculpture that I showed you earlier, it wasn't about the string sculpture, was it? 
It was about the discoveries that I make and the opportunities to invent and learn along the way. This is what I'm trying to bring back to our carnival. You see, our carnival, it, it, it brings us together. It reconnects us to our history, reconnects us to each other. It sustains communities, creates a sense of pride, a sense of community, and it brings different generations and people together. These are the important things that we are losing by not making in our carnival. Carnival is an example of the resilience, the creativity, the talent that resides in our society. We are inherently a creative people, a creative culture. We don't need to outsource creativity. We need to harness it. And so can you imagine what would happen if we were to bring these two practices and bring making back into carnival? Can you possibly imagine what our costuming or kings and queens of carnival, what they might look like? Can you imagine the knowledge that we might be able to produce by really getting back into making in carnival? Can you imagine the possibilities for architecture, sculpture, structural engineering, if we apply principles of wire bending in these fields? What about the tools and technologies that we might be able to create by really looking into how we make in carnival? I mean, really, imagine the possibilities. To me, it's mind-blowing. But this is only possible if, as a people, we get back to making. If we don't make, we don't discover. If we don't make, we lose our opportunities to form communities and build the resources that we really need, our people and their ideas. The future of innovation is rooted in our culture. It's rooted in our carnival. It's rooted in making and in our wire benders. It's, it's not rooted in consumption. It's rooted in creation. So in closing, I invite you. I invite you from whatever field you may be in, adult or student, I invite you to join me. Join me in bringing making back to our culture, back to our homes, back to our schools, and back to our carnival. You see, without it, we risk losing our communities, our ability to invent, our work ethic, our opportunities to create inventions. I invite you to share what you learn. Share it with each other so that we advance together. Let's all become makers. Let's make to think. Let's make to discover. Let's make to invent. I invite you. Join me. Thank you.